All right. My guest in the studio today is Father Brian Eckridge. He is a priest in our diocese. He is, oh, I have no idea when this is going to air. So currently, we are just before Easter when we're recording this. He is the parochial vicar at the Cathedral of St. Joseph. Yes. By the time you hear this, he could be just about anywhere. <laughs> Hopefully not just about anywhere. <laughs> but he is moving to the uh, Del Rapids yep. Parish with um, Father, Father Stevens. Stevens. Thank you, Father yep. Stevens. Uh, and what were the other two parishes that are with it? Uh, Huntimer and Gerritsen. I don't know why I can't remember that. Um, so you get to go to a rural parish. Yes, I, I know do. you're excited Three of about them. that. Uh, how is that going to work? Do you know? No I'm, idea. I'm like, okay, good. <laughs> well, maybe we'll have to bring him back on after <laughs> you've been there a while and say, how's this working? <laughs> so. Okay. So um, today we're going to talk about uh, Father Eckridge's call to the priesthood. And his time as a priest so far and how things are going and what's his favorite part and all that good stuff. So thanks for being here. Sounds good. Yeah. Happy to be here. Yeah. So um, let's just start from the beginning, shall we? How did you get your call from to the priesthood? Okay. Well. <laughs> He's very excited to tell us this. <laughs> I'm just trying to think about where I want to start when you say let's start at the beginning. Maybe we should start first <laughs> with where are you from originally? So I'm originally from Aberdeen. Okay. South Dakota here. Okay. Grew up there. Yep, grew up there. Okay. And then uh, I went to Aberdeen Ron Colley for all 12 years, okay. Catholic school. And then in fall of 2006, I attended uh, South South Dakota State University. Mm-hmm. I was there. Yep. My uh, <laughs> Go Jacks. Yes. I I live and breathe the, the blue and gold. Nice. So, uh, <laughs> I knew but, I liked uh, you for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> so my, my original plan was I to get a chemistry degree. Oh. Which I did. I'm okay. kind of kind of like chemistry. Yeah, I did not see that coming. Oh, I like math and science, kind of. So you're a nerd. Kind of a nerd, a little bit. <laughs> That's okay. My I husband's try to, a nerd I, too. I try to hide it, but that's who I am at heart. Uh, you shouldn't. Nerds are so, great. So, <laughs> so I uh, really, and at that time when I was starting college, I didn't really. I was always Catholic. I didn't have, but I didn't have much interest in the faith. Sure. It was just Sunday mass. Sunday morning was something you did out of obligation. Mm -hmm. So uh, by the grace of God, I continued to do that at the time, even though I really didn't care. Mm -hmm. Um, But then it was... Can I ask you a question? What made you keep doing it, do you think? Obligation. Just obligation. I don't know. I just knew I'm Catholic and... You have have a strong sense of obligation and that was one of them. Yeah. Yeah. I figure figure at minimum I can give God, you know, one hour a week. (laughs) It's not much, but I'll give him that. Sure, sure. Uh, All right. So so then... Yeah, so then my sophomore year, um, Focus, the Fellowship of Catholic oh, University yeah. students, mm-hmm. uh, they showed up for the first time, the first team uh, there. And so Focus, I guess I, sh- I just take for granted everyone knows what they are. Right. <laughs> um, it's a college campus ministry mm-hmm. organization based out of Denver, founded by Curtis Martin. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're on hundreds of campuses yep. now all over the United States. And they... Their program is they send a team. Traditionally, it's two men and two women who mm-hmm. are college graduates, and they live on a campus, or not on the campus, but they serve a campus and live there for an entire year, mm-hmm. sometimes two years. And their whole program is inviting, go entering into the Newman Center, inviting college students into Bible studies. Mm-hmm. And from there, they might choose a handful of people who they pray about and say, who can we dis- invite into discipleship? Wow. And so if they invite you into discipleship, then they will build you up. It's kind of a mentorship. Mm-hmm. And then they send you out and say, okay, now you start your own Bible study. Sure. And then you find your own disciples. And then it's kind of this, supposed to be this exponential growth. So, but I'm a long way away from that part. You know, <laughs> back in my sophomore year, I was just literally getting roped into a Bible study. Mm-hmm. And I still remember this very, very clearly. Um, I was, it was that fall semester, and I was coming out of Sunday Mass uh, at the Newman Center, and it was a focus missionary. John Meyer was his name. He's a, mm-hmm. a from Mon- cowboy from Montana, and he literally <laughs> Talk, is, to he literally is <laughs> out there outside in the lobby, mm-hmm. just saying, "Hey, hey, you, you want to be in a Bible study? Hey, you want to be in a Bible study? Just that's how he's like just." Not and really. People are trying to run away from yeah, him. Yeah, and probably. that's exactly ah. right. And I was one of those guys trying to run away from him. Mm-hmm. And I still remember very clearly when he's like, hey, you, you want to join a Bible study? I'm like, no. 
I'm not, I don't really do Bible studies. He's like, okay, well, that sounds great. Um, here's the clipboard. If you could just put your name and info <laughs> down, uh, we'll be in touch. And I'm like, no, John, I don't think, <laughs> I, don't think you heard I don't think you heard me. <laughs> and he's like, that, that's, that's okay. It's okay to say no. Uh, it's okay to be uncertain if you want to do something. We'll just put your name down and, you know, we'll be in touch. So I'm just like, oh. I'll this. just do it just to make him stop well, talking yeah. to me. Yeah, <laughs> and so then that's exactly right. Yeah. So I'm thinking in the world of email, he can have my email and I'll just he'll send me an email for a newsletter and I'll put it in the junk box, junk, <laughs> junk folder, and I'll never hear from this guy again. Well, I made the mistake of giving him my dorm room number. So uh that very next night he shows up at my dorm say, saying, did he show up? Yep, John showed up in my dorm and he said, I got you signed up for this Bible study with this group of guys and they meet on uh such and such and such a night, such and such a night at eight thirty, and it's like, oh, okay, and I still don't know to this day like why I showed up for that, but I'm so very. You could have not. Yeah, I don't know this. I mean, this is where it's like I really do believe that that the grace of God works even in moments when you when you don't expect it or even want it. Right. And so I showed up at that study, and I'm just like realize that there's five or six other guys that are probably in the same boat as I am. They're, <laughs> they're not quite sure why they're there, but came to this realization. It's like, they're, they're good guys. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if anything, if I don't care about the religious aspect, it's kind of fun hanging out with them. It's, it's fun to actually, it's, it's good to actually have other men who are, are desirous for virtue, mm -hmm. even if they're not quite sure what that is yet. And so, sure. so that's where I entered into that. And, we slowly just developed the habit and life of prayer. Sometimes we challenge each other to say, like, you know, we're all going to meet in the chapel uh, this afternoon at 3 p.m. and we're gonna we're gonna pray at Chaplet of Divine Mercy. Mm -hmm. We do those kind of things, and then like you had to go. It was kind of this fraternal pressure. Yeah. Then where it's like, if you didn't show up, someone's gonna be calling you. You're supposed to be here. What? Mm -hmm. But it was from that kind of being pushed. I literally like to say that. It's the life of prayer slowly started to grow mm -hmm. on me, on mm -hmm. all of us. And to say, okay, there really is something here, you know, there really is this peace, this joy. Mm -hmm. And it's from that moment then, then you start to take things more seriously, start to be more engaged in mass and say, okay, uh, I really, really want to be active in my prayer here within the silence of my own heart and mm -hmm. just so... And then that's where it's just developing that life of prayer, beginning to actually listen to God's voice. And and then there's a few steps and then now I'm a priest. And he, he, <laughs> like, he said to you eventually, hey, yeah, would you be a priest? No, I'm, I'm joking. But yeah, it's, you know, and then. <laughs> These focus guys are geniuses. They are. They're kind of, yeah, focus guys and, and women. And women, yeah. Yeah, there's. Uh, but no, I guess it was, I just got, became more and more involved in mm -hmm. focus. And there was some other influential people and events that happened through focus that um, really led me to the end of my time at SDSU asking the serious question, uh, do I want to go through with chemistry? Do mm -hmm. I want to continue on to get a doctorate, which is what I wanted to do? Mm -hmm. Or there's that quiet voice saying, I mean, give seminary a try. And of course, I didn't want to do that because <laughs> that's the initial reaction. I promised if every young man they're like, no, I don't do anything I can to avoid that trap. I've heard that many times from priests <laughs> so, in their story. <laughs> yeah. And so literally for me, it's this this disposition that I'm not sure to think of this. I honestly really don't want to go there because I'm prideful. I have my own mm -hmm. plans, my ideas. Um, but you know what, God? I'm not going to open the door for you all the way, but I'll open it just a crack. Oh, that's I'll, all he needs. I'll give it, I'll give it a try. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's where I went. And then, you know, and so, yeah. Was oh, there I, some fear, some fear at that point? I mean, besides that, you didn't want to do it. Was there some fear, do you think, for you of going to seminary and thinking this could change my whole life? Yeah. Is that kind of why you think you didn't want to do it or what was, or you just didn't want to, because you really wanted to go into chemistry? Well, I mean, yeah, I was, it's a, you're so invested in something uh -huh. for four and a half mm -hmm. years and it's something I'm good at. Yep. And then, you know, to, to completely switch tracks from, from chemistry and now I'm studying philosophy and theology, <laughs> yeah. which at the time I didn't even consider to be serious fields of study. I really? thought it's just like a bunch of people like just, I don't know, sharing their feelings or I don't know. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm not sure what I thought of it, but, yeah. you know, but then there's, yeah, there is the fear of, 
of the unknown. Mm -hmm. So many things. Even for me, this is kind of maybe a petty thing, but moving to the Twin Cities, moving yeah. to St. Paul. Yeah. As I, I don't know, maybe we'll talk about it, but it's like I do have a love for rural life yeah. for South Dakota. I'm like, I don't even know how to drive in this traffic in the Twin. <laughs> I'm going to kill myself. So, you know, <laughs> or someone and, else. And, or someone else on the road, you know. So, but yeah, I mean, that's that's understandable, just a, yeah. totally something new. And if you follow through with it all the way, it is, a, it's it's a lifelong decision. And mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah. There's a, it, there, there's a justified fear there. Mm -hmm. So, but. Did you just pray your way through it? Well, a little bit. A little yeah. bit? Yeah. <laughs> or did you do something? You're like. I'm just going to do this. <laughs> no. And there's a lot of back and forth when you yeah. go to seminary. There's, you know, there, there's many days when you wake up and you're like, oh, good Lord, what did I get myself into? <laughs> um, especially probably the first year you're like thinking sure. it's still early. I can escape. Um, but something kept you there. Yeah. And that's, yeah. but then it's like, it's just a slow, like dying to yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. Um, I'm not sure what the, what, you know, next semester will bring, but I know that I'm here now. Right. I know that God wants me here right now in this moment. And I think that's oftentimes that's that's all we can have that awareness of just the present moment. Mm -hmm. Don't be worried about the future. Right. Worry about how God is working in your in your life and your heart and mind mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And if he wants you there, you'll be there to, you'll you'll still be there tomorrow and then the next day and then <laughs> before you know it uh, it'll be 5 years and bishop Swain will be asking, or so are we going to ordain you a are deacon? You, are you ready for this? Yeah, and I'm like, well, I'm not sure, but it's a, I'm along for the ride. And I, I don't say that flippantly. I suppose it's like, you know, I always equate it. I suppose, and you'd be able to answer this. It's like marriage, you yeah. know. It's like okay, you you date a person, you're mm -hmm. engaged for a while, you go through formal preparation, but you know, the moment, the, the morning of you're your wedding, like, oh. the moment of your wedding, you're like, I don't know, this is. I mean, this is super scary. I know. <laughs> I know so. my husband would probably say that. <laughs> he was probably ready to put his running shoes on, but you know, he didn't. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's probably good that seminary is, is not like just a year. Oh because, yeah, absolutely. Because there is time that you need to, mm -hmm. to, like you said, die to yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, it's just, there, there's a lot to learn. Yeah. Um, and it's so long too, because I mean, this, this is the big decision. It's, yeah. and Yeah. Yeah, you have to be right. You have to be sure. Yeah. Yeah. If you're just joining us, I'm talking to Father Brian Eckrich about his uh, call to the priesthood, which we just finished up the story for. I think. I, I think we can. Yeah. <laughs> and we're we're just going to kind of talk about how it's been as a priest so far. So, um, when you were ordained, you were ordained by uh, Bishop Swain. You had a kind of a bigger ordination yes, class than we've had recently. There's five. There were or six, six. Six of us. Six. Yep. And and a lot of good priests out of there so far. Yep. Seems like. Everybody's still out there, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good deal. Uh, is there something that really stands out from your ordination day for you? You get a look on your face now. I'm kind I of scared. Just, I, maybe I no, shouldn't have asked that question. <laughs> I, I always like to, you know, when I'm having in these interviews, like, uh, you know, come up with a very profound <laughs> answer. But uh, the thing that stuck out to me is after the ordination, it was like 100 degrees that day. <laughs> <clears throat> and because there were six of us, normally we do like the first blessings over in the oh, right. school gym. Well, mm -hmm. they had set up tents for us out in the parking lot back behind the cathedral. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I had my cassock on. And oh, sure. Like I was, I remember just like thinking I'm, I was so hot. It was so <laughs> miserable. And we we're out there for like two and a half hours. Uh, this is a beautiful moment, you know, to be able to like right. finally give, you know, people my first blessing <laughs> and you're just dripping sweat and thinking about yeah, how hot you yeah. are <laughs> that's not and then, very good <laughs> and, and then and then afterwards then uh i uh was planning a, a barn dance and a, a party up in brookings mm -hmm. at the newman center and mm -hmm. uh inviting all my sdsu friends and so immediately then i had to race up to brookings and <laughs> so, so it was a little bit I of suppose, a rough day with all the heat yeah, it was you know it's one of these joyful days but it was yeah. a complete a day of utter just Okay, not chaos, but yeah. it was <laughs> a lot of activity. Let's say yes. that. <laughs> so, what's been your favorite part of being a priest so far? I know you love. Um, I, I know you love to uh, do your homilies. Yeah. yeah, and that's something I just God has gifted me with having a love and knowledge of the faith, mm -hmm. um, teachings of the faith, the tradition, 
And so anytime I can make, within the context of the Mass, make that a teaching moment in a homily, mm-hmm. that's what I really enjoy, you know. Yeah. Uh, hopefully Good. being able to teach people things that they don't know. Right, uh, right. And they can what, use in their own life. Yeah. yeah. And then also just, you know, I really appreciate trying to make the holy sacrifice of the Mass something reverent. Mm-hmm. Not to say that other priests don't, right. but that's something that's very meaningful to me is just like making present the spiritual realities of the, of that Mass be, be in the representation of Christ's sacrifice on Calvary. Mm-hmm. And if you think about what is the commemoration of what is happening, the gravity of what is happening, the priest should take that utterly seriously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so that's what I like to just try as much as I can to enter into that. Mm-hmm. So I think it shows. I've been to several of your masses before. And I think it shows. Yeah. So you do a good job at that. That's good. <laughs> good. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> Um, has there, is there something that's been the most challenging so far besides being in a big city of Sioux Falls no. <laughs> and Sioux Falls has its, has its joys too. Yeah. There's some, yeah. There's some good people at work a few in the, in the, at the cathedral parish in the chancellery. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> so no big challenges yet. Um, you might, fa- you might face some more when you move on to yeah. your next assignment. Cause it's going to be. Um, a little different because you've been yeah. in bigger parishes until, yeah. okay. and so maybe that's something that I that I'm excited for, but a little bit anxious. You yeah. know, just the reality of, you know, my first assignment was in Watertown, mm-hmm. wonderful assignment. You know, but bigger parish. Mm-hmm. You know, cathedral is its own thing. Yep. yep. Um, <laughs> for sure. And so now it's like to have three small parishes. Yeah. Uh, how does that work? I don't know, but. I'll, <laughs> I'll be learn. willing to try it we'll out. We'll do right? another. We'll do another interview, and I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, sounds good. So you have some kind of cool hobbies. I guess we'd have to call them hobbies. Would I think so. Hobbies because yeah. they're not what you do for work, obviously. No. So tell me about your cool. We have a we have a couple minutes left, and I have one other thing I want to ask you. So okay, what are your cool hobbies? Well, uh, I'm one. I get two hobbies. <laughs> yeah. I think the first one that I I've done since high school was. Uh, Professional audio and lighting production work. Uh, was Father Eckridge is a DJ. Yeah, I am. So, <laughs> yeah, but I'm all about like microphones and stuff yes. like this. If uh, I could perhaps, you know, if, 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 if Bill just left, I could. <laughs> He's t- offering to take over your job, Bill. <laughs> no, I'm not gunning for your job. But it's, no, it's something that, uh, you know, I have a lot of my own equipment now. Mm-hmm. It's something that I've really... Uh, sort of a hobby run wild I should have quit buying stuff but <laughs> but then like I find great joy in being able to use that as an act of charity mm-hmm. towards towards the church for the Newman Center for example like I'm I get the privilege I was asked to do the the lights and sound for the the gift of hope oh, event yes, for right. the for yep. the foundation on April 10th here yep. so those are the kind of things you know the 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 school dinner theater fundraiser for up in Watertown mm-hmm. you know those are the kind of things that get to help out the parish, help out the community. Yeah. You know, and it's something that I enjoy doing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and we've seen some pictures. You look pretty cool doing it, too. Yeah. And so, you know. <laughs> you probably get a few people asking, are you a priest? Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny when people, you know, people aren't quite sure what to make of right. me. They think, and sometimes people are, I don't know, say rude, but they're like, oh, you're going to play just like praise and worship and Gregorian chant? And I'm like, well, I can if you want, but <laughs> that wasn't my I plan. probably know more about mu- popular music than you do, so I plan on playing that. <laughs> That's funny. So it's, a, yeah. Yeah. So I, what's the other one? The other back, cool hobby? I Backpacking. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yep. So yes. I, from, I guess, a young age, probably inspired by my grandpa Eckrich, who was very avid, avid outdoorsman going mm-hmm. up to the Boundary Waters and Going up to fishing in Canada, I kind of caught that bug, and um, I don't get to go up to Canada, but yeah. like I love, I've gone up to the Boundary Waters. Mm-hmm. I love going out to hike the Bighorn Mountains in oh, Wyoming. Yep. yep. I go out there for you know four days, three nights. You need to load everything up that you mm-hmm. need: food, tent, uh, in a pack. It's hopefully not too heavy. So and, some serious stuff. Yeah, some serious. and then you know, and you're out there for it's just kind of like man versus wild, and I just I don't know. <laughs> I can see you out there. I, I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. That's, uh, that's cool. It's always nice to know what priests do in their spare time because yeah. you don't seem like, I this, don't take this the wrong way, but you don't seem like real people to us uh-huh. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you know, you're like, you're, you're a priest. You must do only that, right? Yeah. <laughs> but they don't. Um, okay, so the last thing I really want to ask you is um, if a young man came to you, or even, even a, it doesn't have to be a young man, if a man came to you and said, uh, I think I might be being called to the priesthood, is there some advice you would give them? Yeah, give it a shot. <laughs> I mean, go to seminary. This is the one thing that, I don't know, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine, but there's the the pious Catholic mentality, oh, I'm discerning, I'm going to pray about it, I'm going to pray about it. Oh, I'm still I'm still praying about it. Get pray for and a it, long it's just, time. Well, and that's, it's, sometimes it's like there's a certain level of prayer and discernment. I guess that should happen throughout, but then there needs to be action. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, if you think you're called to this, even if you're not sure, as I described in my own story, go for it. Mm -hmm. You know, I always get like to give the example of uh, maybe like non-religious, like Mm -hmm. if a man, if if a young man sees a woman that he's interested in, you don't just hide off and sit in the corner. Pray and discern it for a long time. It's like you you go up to her and (laughs) say, you know, hey, I think I kind of like you. You know, let's. (laughs) Let's go out. Let's, have some let's, let's have coffee. Let's <laughs> yeah. let's you know, and then he starts dating her, and then it's in that time that it becomes a moment of discernment. Does it mean because you start to date someone that you you know you're gonna ma- get married and have a bunch of kids? Yeah. And it's like no, you might not. Well, seminary is the same way. It's yeah. like that's a good analogy. So yeah, and it's like and the other thing too that I always try. It's good to remind men, and we need this. Oh, when you go to seminary. It's not a trap. You're not. You're not. You're not stuck. <laughs> you're not know. stuck there. <laughs> it's not a trap. You know. I know one of the the, the beautiful words of uh, Father Peter Williams, who is the vice rector. He's a priest of the Archdiocese mm-hmm. of Minneapolis, Saint Paul, and he'd always say, he's like, if a man discerns well, and he discerns that God is not calling him to the priesthood, mm-hmm. then go in peace. Yep. That's a beautiful thing. Then now, having been strengthened and educated and, and he grows in seminary now he's more equipped to yeah. be a, a good and faithful husband and father yep. so for sure it's that's but i just say it's give it a try yeah i think that's great advice so and see where god leads you yeah that's yep. all i can say yeah i think that's great advice all right well we're out of time father okay. Eckrich. so thanks for being here today i hope you do very well in your rural parishes i, I think so. you will i think they'll like you there um it's hard not to right yeah. <laughs> He's like, sure, whatever. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being here. Yes. All right. If you haven't uh, found us on social media yet, you can find us at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at SF Diocese. Uh, you can check out our website at sfcatholic.org as well to see what's happening in the diocese. So that's it for us today. Hope you'll join us again next week for more Catholic Views.